Hello there, welcome to our parent webinar. Today I'll be looking at how you can support your children during this new third COVID-19 lockdown. So let me just introduce myself to those that don't know me. My name is Nikki Stewart, I'm a BACP accredited counsellor. I also work for Mental Health First Aid England and offer adult and youth um, training courses on mental health first aid. I'm a clinical supervisor and I've worked in the field of mental health services for 13 years. So today we'll be looking at parenting during the current lockdown and we'll be looking at helping you to help your children manage their worries. We also look at some self-care for us as parents around um, boundary setting as well as keeping um, sleep. So why does this lockdown feel harder? If we think about it, we've had the first one was last year, we had good weather. The second one, people were looking forward to Christmas. This one we're going through obviously the uh, this winter period, so it's darker, um, shorter days. And it's very cold and it's hard to get outside. And the news at the moment does seem to be full of doom and gloom. So it's really important that we sort of watch our media diet and turn off the news when we can. And this has been going on for a year now. So we really want our lives to be back to normal. But whatever feeling we're having, it's valid. And it's important to remember that we will all be in different boats. So let's look at some research that's gone out there. We're all members of the online wellbeing help team tips. And they did a survey um, for parents. 87% of parents think that school closures have impacted their child's mental health. 58% are concerned about self-esteem. 74% reported that they're being worried about their children's screen habits. And 50% are concerned that they don't know how to talk to their children about these issues. And 64% are worried about schoolwork and motivation. So there's a lot of worries out there for parents. I just want to validate that for you as parents at the moment. And when we hosted this webinar live this week with our, our school parents, a lot of parents in attendance did echo these, uh, these worries and concerns. So you're not alone. I think this period of this connection may make it feel like you're the only parent that's going through this. But let me just normalise that for you. Um, every parent is having these feelings. So let's just put that out there. So although we're in a different new storm at the moment, we are all in different boats. And it's important to validate that as well. Uh, one person's experience may not be the same as another person. So this graphic here helps us understand what we need to focus on. This boat is in the middle of the storm and using metaphors is really helpful for us as well as children to understand what it might feel like. So it's about finding your anchor here as this boat's been set two anchors and also looking out for ways that we can take care of ourselves. So this lighthouse here gives us our five ways to well-being, which is what you know we follow at school and it looks at ways that we can be of and be active, take notice and connect and keep learning. So using this sail here, we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Now this was a psychologist that believed that we have to meet the basic needs before we can go on and feel the rest of um, this triangle. So at the moment, all we need to focus on in terms of our family life is being safe and keeping each other well. And that involves food, sleep, water. As long as these basic needs are met, the rest will come. So at Homewood House School, we know that um, there's help and signposting available to our whole community. We have Buzz Club, which is available for our pupils. Um, that's a YouTube channel, as well as on the Homewood House School YouTube channel. That invites children to have some daily activities that let them get outside or connect with nature and follow their five ways to well-being. We also hold these weekly webinars for you as parents. And this graphic's nice to remind us that this journey that we're going to go on really means that we have to have a journey of a thousand miles begins with a, a single step. So remember that. So let's normalise some of the feelings we would have been having around this uh, coronavirus. So there could be straining relationships, lots of uncertainty. So take a minute just to look at this graphic and see which one resonates with you. It's really good to connect with the feeling that you might have inside. Now, I like to use graphics with children to help them put some uh, feelings words into language to be able to verbalise it. So this is a really nice poster that enables children to pick out feelings and the, uh, the, the face that resonates with them. If you can as well, you can have these stuck up at home or ask children to sort of use language around feelings. So you may be seeing anxiety in your children at the moment at school. So it can present differently in different ways. So it could be difficulty getting to sleep. I know that a lot of parents have reported that. Feeling angry or agitated and not being able to understand why. Uh, maybe sort of you're seeing some defiance or challenging behaviours at home. Or um, maybe they're avoiding sort of screen work. 
or they're having some sense of intolerance or uncertainty in themselves or focus issues. So all of these, again, just normalise them for your children. Sometimes it'd be hard to find out the reason why or actually find an anchor for that. But just saying it, it's OK to feel not OK is good to hear. So this is a nice reminder from Dr. Karen Traisman. She's a clinical psychologist and trauma specialist. She says that every interaction is an intervention. So remember that just by saying hello, good morning, how are you? Now you think about it on a normal day, so a sociologists say that we normally have what they call 20 to 30 loose ties a day. And a loose tie is where you might meet somebody in the corridor or you might sort of pass in the street and say, hello, good morning, how are you? So we're missing that at the moment. So that sense of disconnection means that we're missing those interactions. So it's important we make notice and take notice of those interactions that we do have at home. So this is a good graphic to help us understand that really what we may see is above the waterline. So this anger that we may be seeing um, amongst our children, they just want to go to the park, they don't want to have to do their online work. Uh, everyone's getting on each other's nerves, someone's taken toys, they haven't got boundaries in their bedroom. So that's what's expressed above the waterline. But if we look at the iceberg, we can see 90% of this is under the waterline. There could be sadness that's being unexpressed in terms of missing their friends, missing normal life. There could be a fear around getting ill, and that's one that doesn't always get verbalised, but it comes out in different ways. <clears throat> So there's some good resources I'm going to signpost you to as parents that you can sort of get some support from. Now, this is Beacon Family Services. Now, I like this graphic because it really helps us see the lighthouse um, metaphor. So to feel safe, they're going to be excited, confident, comfortable. This is the above the water. Then we start to see maybe angry, uncomfortable, frustrated. And then underneath the waterline, they're feeling alone, empty, invisible, and that drowning feeling. So just take notice of where they're feeling. Are they feeling safe? Are they struggling at the moment or do they feel like they're drowning? So that feeling of being alone, invisible, numb. So it's good to check in with yourselves as well as your children where you're feeling. And if you are feeling down here, what do you need to help you come back up to feeling safe? So this is a tool I like to use in the therapy room. Anyone's been to webinar before knows these blob trees. They're really good. This has been adapted for screen work with my clients. So you can check in with your children. You don't have to be a therapist to be therapeutic. It's really good to be able to verbalise how they're feeling. It may not be that they can't actually find the words. So just to choose a blob on this tree. So maybe J here is feeling isolated. Um, even if they pick O, that's OK. We just need to check out what O is up to. How did it get there? If anybody on the tree can help O. There's no wrong answer and there's no right answer on this tree. It's completely subjective. And again, get them to try and check out where they are on this mood scale. Um, it starts one, as it goes up, tired, hungry, lonely, embarrassed, sad, scared. What do I do? Do I run, fight or freeze? And this is the way they have to discharge. So it's really good to get in touch with the feelings before they reach this. So maybe at six, we sort of help them to verbalise it, to bring them back down and regulate, rather than have to go up to 10 and discharge. So I'm going to put this on the resources file. This is an action plan that can be really helpful. It's um, from the Anna Freud Children's Centre. And they're looking at how you can help children sort of plan their um, actions they need to take when they're feeling a bit anxious. So they can create their own thermometer and describe how they're feeling, and what they're thinking about. And then you could help them with this worry. What would be the appropriate solution? So it's a really nice plan that can be written out and referred to when you are feeling, uh, seeing those feelings in your children. Now, this is a Padlet I've created. The link's here for anyone that wants to have a look at it. It's basically a links um, resource. So there's parenting support, managing feelings. There's lots about neurodiversity and there's also support for school staff here. So any link that I find that's useful, I'm putting on this link. So you can page through these and see what's appropriate to you. And it's all really about helping wellbeing during COVID-19. So anything you think could be added to that or you know of any good resources yourself, let me know and we can add those onto the, uh, the Padlet. So I like to use Dan Hughes's PACE approach. Now PACE stands for being playful, having a sense of acceptance, being curious, and as well as showing empathy. And this is a really good approach to use with your children. So that playfulness really um, joining in, having fun, being spontaneous, um, and that level of acceptance. You know, they are feeling a bit prickly or annoyed one day that we can still hug the cactus, as they say. And giving them the feeling that they're loved no matter what. 
and their feelings aren't right or wrong, they just are there. And being curious, now if you want to find out what's going on for them, use I wonder language rather than why did that happen? What's wrong with you? Just ask them to tell you about it and be curious. And that sense of empathy, sort of check in with them. That, you, I can see your feeling so angry. I know it must be hard. So being able to use this PACE approach really enables a sense of connection. Now, I like to use interoception tools in the, in the therapy room. And this is something we can encourage as parents as well at home. It just means that we check in with the body and how you sense feeling. So sometimes we might say to our children, that, so that feeling sounds really hard to describe. I wonder where you're feeling that inside of you. And you may find that they connect with it in their head, their throat, their chest, their stomach. You just ask them what sort of shape that may be or colour or how it feels inside and does it get bigger and smaller? And what helps the feeling? It's really important that we connect with the feeling inside the body. Now, as parents, we're going to try and get them to this stage where we can reason with them and try and find out what a behaviour is about. Before we get there, we have to be able to come down here to regulate. Now, this is a resource from the Beacon House Therapeutic Services and Trauma Team. Their, their resources are brilliant, so I really recommend their website, and I've put the link at the end of this webinar. So we know that children's brains develop from the bottom up. So we have the brainstem, um, the primitive brain here, and then the limbic system where all the emotions are stored. And then up here, we've got the cortical brain, which is where the thinking brain is. So to be able to regulate and to help them to get in touch with the feeling, we need to be able to make them feel calm. So before we can start saying, you know, that's wrong, you did that now and you need to time out or you know, this is the, the consequence to that. We need to be able to come down here and help them regulate. Um, we soothe and regulate and then we relate that sense of connection, that empathy. And then once we're attuned and they feel safe, then we can come up here and we can reason. And this is the three R's by Dr. Um, Bruce Perry. and He's a neuroscientist in the field of trauma. So when we get to this stage of being able to reason, this is where we can actually get through and say, okay, let's make a plan for that. If that ever happens again, we can do this. So the thoughts, feelings, and actions wheel, this is a CBT, a cognitive behavioral therapy type approach. And we've used this before in previous webinars. So it's really good to be able to connect. So look at how our thinking impacts how we feel and how we act. So it's important to notice the action to reflect the action and then connect with a sense of interoception. I wonder what's going on inside for you, and giving them that sense of being able to verbalise all of these different basic core human emotions. So dealing with difficult feelings, it's really important that we notice it, that we name it, and then we sit with it. Now, this is the uncomfortable bit. A lot of people want to rush past this and get through to the end. But as long as we sit with it, we know it will pass. Remember that as parents ourselves as well, when we're having those feelings, sometimes it's really hard to sit with an uncomfortable feeling. And then we let it go. So there's that emotional regulation where we can move up and down this mood ladder constantly. Then thinking about if your child particularly has a worry, sometimes I like to use this scale metaphor, but sometimes it can tip the scales. The worries can feel very overwhelming. It's really good that they have a list of things that make their worries go away. And I like to call that the cool down plan. So sometimes they can make a, a real formalized list of things that help them feel calm and regulated. So have that available for them and for you. So this cool down plan can be part of maybe a coping skills in terms of what they like to do. And everybody's coping skills will be different. So it's important to have a different plan for each of your children. So even for yourselves, I mean, it may be that some people like to read and that makes them feel calm. And others like to do breathing exercises, and naming the feeling, and using that positive self-talk and having maybe some creative outlets, whether that be art or um, Lego or something you enjoy. And cosmic yoga, have a look online because yoga is very good in terms of being able to breathe and be able to move through that. And playing a game together. Now, this is a sense of connection we see here. And that connection is really important in this period. So what is in their feelings toolbox? How do your children help themselves to regulate? And it's really good to be able to help them to make that plan. So again, look at the things they do to help them. Now, I like to use Play-Doh. Now, there's a video on the uh, YouTube um, 
channel for helping make homemade play-doh if you haven't got any at home at the moment but it's really good it's very tactile it uses all of your senses and it really can help calm and regulate and i use this with adults as well so it's not just for children play-doh it's a really good way to model and shape and express feelings Again, there's another blob sheet here for blob worry. So if you're feeling that sense that they need to express or explore a worry, they can choose a blob, um, maybe color that blob in the color the worried feeling is, and then talk to you about it. And all talk is about the blob, it's not about your child. So maybe if they chose, let's choose this one, for example, this blob. Okay, you're bringing this blob today. I wonder how blob is. What does the water feel like for blob? Um, what does blob need? Who can help blob? Um, what happens if blob feels like this again? So you're making the talk all about the blob, not about your child. And sometimes that's easier for children to express their feelings that way. Now, this is a really nice grounding exercise you can use for yourselves as well. We can do this now, actually, while you're listening to this webinar. So let's practice this. So I'm going to invite you now to sort of, as you look around the room, name yourselves three things you can see. And then maybe we can think about four things we can feel. So reach out and touch those things you can feel. And then three things you might be able to hear in the room. And then two things that you may have smelt today. And then lastly, the one thing you can taste. You have tasted today as well. So that's your five, four, three, two, one. And that engages all of your senses. And that's really important in terms of um, grounding when you're feeling dysregulated yourselves. Another nice intervention you can use is the Guatemalan worry people. These are available online. So it's just the act of telling a worry to somebody um, at bedtime, particularly. I know a lot of children come up with worries at bedtime. Um, you can project those worries onto these Guatemalan worry people. And the legend says that um, if you tell this worry to a worried doll and put it under your pillow at night, in the morning your worries have gone away. So it's just the act of really expressing that worry that's really helpful in this. So have a look at those. And you can even make these at home. They're quite fun to do as a craft activity. And then there's another worry monster. These are available online. These are really nice. Some uh, teachers have got these in the classroom. So write the worry down and then pop it in the zip mouth of the worry monster and then put it inside and then the worry monster takes the worry away and it's another nice way for little children to be able to express their worries. Reading as well is really empowering for young children because if they hear their story echoed within the narrative of book it makes them feel less alone and makes them feel that they have that sense of being heard and seen. So have a look at the reading agency there's a link again at the end of this webinar that enables you to choose books that help them feel that they can express themselves through the narrative. I have this book here, The Unworry Book. I wanted to share this with you because this is a one that I really do advocate and say that's really helpful for children. And um, let's have a look inside. So how do you feel? So every page looks at different ways to express a worry. So this is good to be able to put your finger on exactly how you're feeling. So it invites you to go through this emotions map and pick out the signposts that you're feeling. And then peaceful pencils, this is a really nice mindfulness task where they're able to just trace through and colour or draw just to really calm and regulate them. And creating a worry box, that's a really nice thing to do at home to be able to sort of engage with the worry. Um, the worry box then takes the worry away and, and it's expressed. And once the worry has been expressed, they do feel regulated. And then if they're not worried, it's really good to notice what it feels like when they haven't got a worry. So this, this image here invites them to go ahead and draw that. If they were on Unworry Island, um, what would it look like? What would be around them? What's stopping them from sleeping? So there's some words here that you can use instead of stop crying or what's wrong with you today. And it's okay to be sad. This is really hard for you. I'm here with you. Tell me about it. It's that sense of connection that we talk about when we talk about Dr. Bruce Perry's three R's. Now there's some nice resources here from the National Children's Bureau. And this is sometimes if somebody they know or love is ill at the moment or um, has coronavirus themselves, they can give you this card that really helps a sense of connection. So some, if someone is ill and you can't visit them, they can be surrounded by somebody that can care. So you can tick this and then give that to the person. 
Now, we tried this on the, the live webinar, and it was really nice for parents just to have that time to do these self-holding techniques, and they really do work. Um, this is Peter Levine's techniques. So try one now. So let's put um, take our left hand and place it across our forehead, and then take your right hand and just place it at the back of your neck here. And this is where your uh, vagus nerve is um, located. And that feels quite calming. So just spend a few seconds applying as much pressure as you like. And there's plenty of those there, so if you are finding that the children throughout the day feel a little bit wobbly or dysregulated, try out some of these self-holding techniques. Now, when we think about the return to school, it will happen. They may feel a bit nervous about coming back, and we, I like to use these circles of control graphics, and this is something you can even complete at home with them. If you give them just two concentric circles, it's really good to be able to put the things they can control in the inner circle things that we can't control in the outer circle. So you can apply this to lockdown as well at the moment. So at the moment, they can control having positive thoughts. They can be kind to themselves and others, and they can ask for help if they need it, um, as well as washing hands and keeping social distance if they do go outside of the home. Things we can't control is how long is this going to go on for, actions of others, um, how other people feel, how they play, their ideas, the weather, and the words people. So you could even recreate this for yourself to let them see that it's okay to have worries, but we can't really focus on this orange circle, we'll just feed into the worry, but we can control this green circle. So as parents, it's really important that you look after yourselves as well, because as I say, dysregulated adults cannot help or support unregulated children. So it's really important that you feel grounded and safe. And this metaphor with the, uh, the airplane oxygen mask is really important to really put yours on before you support somebody or your child. So again, children will observe the behaviour of the adults around them. They look for cues on how to manage their difficult emotions um, during this time. So again, really make sure that you feel a sense of grounding and have the support you need at home. The weekly wellbeing checkup, I like to use this with staff and also with myself to check in how I'm doing. So it's good to see how you're feeling and how you're doing mentally, physically. Am I drinking enough water? The basics, think about that. Water, sleep and a good healthy diet. And sleep is really important for positive mental health. Um, so you can also do yourself a little sleep audit. The Sleep Council have got a really good uh, um, link on their website. So how is your thinking today? How are your thoughts making you feel? This is that CBT model we used earlier. Am I having unhelpful thoughts? And you can use these resources here for some help. And how's your stress container? We know that if we think about the container as a bucket, so it starts getting full of stresses, and sometimes we don't open the tap to let those stresses go. Uh, it can cause that overflowing. And this is where we see that emotional snapping here, where the, the, the vulnerability the container is smaller so it enables this sense of overflow because the tap here is blocked. So think about your coping strategies. What do you do to help yourself open that tap and let the stresses go? So thank you for coming along today. This is a short introduction to the webinar. We do have a full one that's interactive with parents. You're welcome to come along live and that's every Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, but I will provide a recording after this so that you can catch up on any of the tips or resources that we share. So although this isn't interactive, I just hope you've, you've taken something from this. Um, and if you need to contact me, I am available. So please reach out um, if you're part of the school community, I'm here. Um, so my name's been Nikki. It's been my pleasure to talk to you today and I hope you keep well and safe. See you next time. Thank you, bye.